All right, today I'm gonna to be going over Google search partners. So there was a recent report that Analytics put together. So Analytics is an analytics company. They put together a study, does a lack of transparency create brand safety concerns for search advertisers? And it's all geared towards Google search partners. So I haven't talked about Google search partners that often on my channel. So I'm gonna be going over Google search partners a little bit today, um, how you can opt out of Google search partners for your search network campaigns, and then Google's response that I've seen so far from this report. I'm sure they may release another response after I do this video, but I have a couple of different updates that I've seen after Analytics released this report. So first and foremost, what are Google search partners? So we'll use Google's exact definition of search partners, sites in the search network that partner with Google to show ads and free product listings. So it includes websites that have search engines on them and website like search engines powered by Google, and that also will show product listings uh, from Google as well. Search partners extend the reach of Google search ads to hundreds of non-Google websites. This includes YouTube, other Google websites, on search partner websites, your ads and listings can appear on search results pages, site directory pages, or other pages related to a person's search. So the whole point of search partners is basically to ex expand the reach of the Google search network. So obviously, if you're running a Google search network campaign, your ads are going to be running directly in the main Google search engine. So your ads are always gonna run here. This is something you obviously cannot opt out of. This is the Google search network. Now, part of the Google search network is Google search partner. So if you're running an active campaign, one of the things you can do is go to your campaign settings and you can either choose to include Google search partners or exclude Google search partners. So it's a question I get every now and then, should we be running with Google search partners? And really the answer I generally have, um, and the answer I had before this report came out was usually, yes, we should run on Google search search partners to see how the performance is because we can always opt out of it later. So generally when I'm creating a new campaign, I include Google search partners, click on save. Now, one of the things that's interesting is if you do exclude it, it says most advertisers include their ads on Google search partner websites. So most advertisers do that because you're automatically opted in to Google search partners and most people aren't going to go through the time, the the step of excluding it when you are already opted into it. You're also a lot of times already opted into the Google Display Network, which I generally always keep my Google Search Network and Display Network campaigns completely separate just because the performance is gonna be different. So I generally treat those campaigns, actually 100% of the time I treat those campaigns separately. Now, if you're wondering how do I see the performance of Google Search Partners for my existing search campaigns and should I exclude them? What you can do is go to your campaigns. I actually have a, a couple of old search campaigns that I ran in the past. And then as we as we come down here, here's the display network campaign. So you'll see this one was just opted into the, the display network. But any search network campaign that you don't opt out of search partners, you're going to have information about Google search and search partners when you go to segment and you do network with search partners. So it'll show the network your ad was shown on. So you actually do get some reporting, but all you get is search partners. So you don't know what websites your ads are actually running on. And I'll go over why that's important in a minute. Now, what you can see here is we have some data from the existing campaign where I spent about 1800 in on the Google search network, about $650 on Google search partners. So you can actually see our statistics here. First things first, you cannot optimize your click-through rate for search partners. So you may see a click-through rate that's a little bit better, or you may see a really, really low click-through rate. It's not something that impacts your quality score. Only the Google search network impacts your quality score. So if you're seeing a low click-through rate on search partners, that's really not a reason to get rid of it. Now, one of the things that you're going to see here is we actually get data for both networks separately. So if we scroll over here, we can see our average cost per click, our total cost here, and then the most important thing, our conversion data. So you're going to see conversion value and then our return on ad spend here. So this one is showing that search partners actually outperformed Google search for this campaign. And for this other campaign, it did not outperform Google search. If we keep scrolling over and we look at the clicks, conversion rate, conversions, average cost per click, average cost per conversion. So we could see here the clicks are generally always going to be less on Google search partners because there's just not as much volume as you're going to get on Google search. You can see my conversion rate was almost double what it was on Google search, which is actually kind of surprising that generally, generally doesn't always happen. Um, down here, it was a little bit less. We didn't get as much activity down here, so it's not really st statistically significant. Um, you can see my cost per conversion pretty close to what we're seeing from Google search. Search partners up here, same exact thing. So we have a cost per conversion is a little bit better. Our cost per click is actually a little bit higher on the search partner network. And we drove a good amount of conversions based on our overall spend. So for this campaign, it actually performed pretty well. This campaign it did not perform as well. So generally what I do is whether or not I opt into Google search partners is I will opt in when I start to create a campaign, let that campaign run for a little bit and look at the performance between search network and search partners and see if 
search partners are dragging down that performance at all, or if it's even getting any activity. Now, this may change because the way Adalytics put together a report, does a lack of transparency create brand safety concerns for search advertisers? So I'm going to go through this report really quickly. First things first, I want to give you an example of two different search partners, one that is mentioned a lot in the report and the other one that generally comes up when you're searching who are Google search partners. So Lycos.com is a Google search partner. If I go there and I search for the best stocks, you're going to see ads related to best stocks. So an advertisement here, advertisement here, advertisement here, and another one, another one. This whole page is pretty much just advertisements. So I guess Lycos just exists to basically be ads. Um, so the first six or seven results were ads, and then we finally get into some organic listings here. So this is all powered by Google, and I'm sure Lycos makes uh, some, some money from this actual search result as well. So this is one example of a search partner. Another one is YouTube. So YouTube, if we go in and search WordPress, you're going to see there's a Bluehost ad here. WordPress hosting over 75% off select plans, Bluehost plus WordPress. And this is basically just a search ad. They're opted into the search partner network. So their ads are going to run on YouTube as well. Very relevant ad. You get a nice image here. And if somebody clicks on this, it is generally probably going to perform pretty similarly to any search network ad that you're running. Now, Seer Interactive has a list of some of the different search partners, and they have a really good article here. I'll put it in the video description if you want to read it. But some of the search partners include YouTube, Google Groups, Google Maps, Google Images, Google Shopping. So some of these different Google search engines that you see and some of these different Google-owned pro properties. Different search engines such as Ask, Lycos, and Dogpile.com. Um, search results and product pages on partner websites, Amazon, Walmart, Target. A lot of different product pages where people do a lot of searches. So you'll see they have an example down here. Same thing in YouTube. YouTube, Anchorage, Alaska Summer Activities, and we have an ad. So this is what the search partner network is, um, and there's a lot of different websites on it. There are thousands and thousands of websites on the search partner network. The problem is if you are looking at your data, you can't actually see what websites your ads are running on. So that was the big part of this analytics study. So let's come over here and go over the study. So analytics is an analytics firm. They used open source methods to find any websites they can find that had Google search partners added, and they were able to identify websites serving those search ads. They identified over 36,000 websites that appear to be part of the Google search partner network and that also serve Google ads. So what they did is they examined all the data they could find. And what uh, one of the major reasons they did this is because advertisers can't block specific search partners. So they're working with a Fortune 500 brand and that brand found out that their search ads were on different websites. They specifically did not want their ads going on Breitbart.com, and it was one of the things they added to domain exclusions, and then they found out that their search search partner ads could actually run on Breitbart.com. So if we come over here really quick, I did an example search. Uh, so if you go to the website, and I did the same thing, best stocks, and now you have some sponsored results here as part of the best stocks, and then it comes down and lists all of their different articles. So not taking a stance one way or another about the website, but obviously there are going to be websites that advertisers do not want to advertise on just because their brand doesn't align with those websites so they found out that their search ads were on different websites like this websites with pirated content that had pirated content for download r-rated websites so like xxx websites hundreds of iranian websites that are potentially under u.s sanctions um, and then the brand had domain exclusions in place but their ads still served on some of the blocked websites which was really what raised the concern from analytics in the first place Google's response, they told Adweek, Adalytics has made ex wildly exaggerated claims by trying to generate as many negative ad placements as they could, but their own analysis found that those placements rarely occurred before they intentionally trigger them. So basically what Google is saying is this Adalytics went to these different websites and specifically tried to find ads from the companies they were working with, and then they were saying, okay, their ads are running on these websites, whereas Google is saying, for the most part, their ads are never going to be running on those websites, and they only ran there because they were intentionally searching their keywords on those websites, which... Either way, I mean, if somebody doesn't want their ads to appear on a specific website, Google should allow them to opt out with ease. Um, and then it says, though we take enormous issue with analytics methodology and conclusions, we always look to improve our products and meet our partners' needs. So after the analytics study, one of the things that happened was a couple of large advertisers reached out to Google and basically said, we are going to stop our Performance Max campaigns unless you kind of do something to fix this. So the next part of their response is, and this happened about a couple hours ago, I saw the article in Adweek. So if we come over here, we have the Adweek article. Exclusive, Google lets advertisers opt out of the search partner network on all campaigns following an analytics report. This is something they never allowed actually in the past with Performance Max and app campaigns. So advertisers have always been able to opt out of the search partner network for search campaigns 
But for Performance Max and app campaigns, which are also running search advertising, those ones they have not been able to opt out of. So now what they're allowing advertisers to do, and I haven't seen exactly how to do it with Performance Max yet. I was going to create a campaign and see if uh, see if they give you that option in the campaign creation process, or I'll, I'll check other campaigns and see how we can opt out. If not, always just reach out to Google and see if they will help you do that as well. Um, last part, at some additional notes. Four sites were serving ads on the U.S. Treasury specially designated nationals list under sanctions. Hundreds of R-rated websites found around 200 Iranian websites identified with custom search code and ads. The example that they used in the article was this website here, which I guess is a Iran alloy steel company that is under U.S. sanctions. So I guess they were running Google search partners. They may still be running Google search partners if we come over here and do a search. I just pulled up the website. So this is uh, one of the examples that they used throughout the analytics study. Um, over 2,200 sites found that may enable copyright violations based on Google's delisting request. And then ads observed on sites considered for kids. So Army advertising on a website, Kids Search. So kids go, I guess it's a kids search engine. I don't even know. Um, and I guess they have ads running on there that aren't really age appropriate. Some websites auto redirect to pages with pre populated search queries, which is against the Google Ads policies. And then they had brands like FBI, Apple, um, some politician brands, media agencies that had search ads unsanctioned Iranian or R-rated websites. So these were some of the additional notes from the analytics study. And if you scroll through the analytics study, you can actually see some of the different screenshots they found here. So this was an FBI ad that is on the website I showed you before. Uh, this is another website, the US Mint official website. So they have the army website here, same website here. Um, they showed a couple of different, so Uber ads that were running on Breitbart and then also BMW ads that were running on Breitbart.com as well. So these were screenshots from November, 2023. So I'm filming this beginning of December, 2023. So then they found R rated websites, X rated websites, whatever you want to call them, other ads running on. So I would definitely recommend looking through this article if you're interested in more about the study that they did. Um, one of the things I found was ad exchanger covered this, um, Google search, search partners is unsafe for advertisers and they offered three six suggestions which i think are perfect should be an opt-in service not one that requires the marketer to opt out google search and performance max campaign should not run on google search partners unless an advertiser willfully opts in i completely agree with that uh, google search partners should offer category level exclusion options so i completely agree with that as well and then should filter vendors on the service for better overall brand safety and suitability before allowing them to become part of the gsp network pretty simple solutions that google should probably go and implement uh, but I just kind of wanted to go over search partners and what they are and do a quick little overview of the report that came out and then how you can opt out, how you can segment your camp, your existing search campaigns and see how they're performing with search partners. If you are running performance max and you don't want your ads running on search partners, then definitely reach out, go to help. Um, or I haven't seen how to do this in the campaign yet for performance max or app campaigns with search campaigns. I know you can easily do it through the search network. So my overall recommendation would be anything that is sensitive, anything that is age sensitive, anything that you're advertising, especially with uh, if you're working with clients and things like that, you may just want to opt out of Google search partners now and just wait a little bit and see if Google gives more transparency and kind of fixes some of the is these issues that are happening with the search partner network, making sure that all the websites are actually reputable websites because it doesn't have to be perfect, but people don't want their ads running on certain websites, especially when you're spending money to run ads on websites that were listed in the analytics report. So this is my over overview of it. Um, generally, when I'm creating campaigns, I opt into the search partners, allow my campaign to run, and then segment by the results and see if it's dragging down campaign performance at all. Keep in mind, again, the click-through rate really doesn't matter for the search partner network, and it's not something you can optimize for. I've seen really low click-through rates, and then I've seen click-through rates that are a little bit closer to Google search, but usually they're always a little bit less than Google search from what I've seen. Uh, you can see here, so this one actually got more impressions on well the other one did too on google search partners but way less clicks so i like to actually run on both and just see if they perform well i mean obviously a placement like youtube is perfectly fine a placement like google groups like google maps all these other placements are not bad placements but if your ads are running on websites that you don't want them to run on especially some of the websites that were listed here in the analytics report then yes yeah, i understand why advertisers would want to opt out of the google search partner network and it may be something that i ask advertisers in the future that i'm working with just to make sure that we're running their ads on reputable websites and we'll probably see better performance usually for the most part just running directly on the google search network anyway but 
I've seen better performance at times on search partners, so it's definitely something that you can test. Uh, if you don't want your ads being on any of these uh, sensitive websites, then just opt out for your search campaign, your performance max campaign, and your app campaign. So these are Google search partners. If you have any questions about Google search partners, please leave them in the comment section. Thank you for watching my video today, and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.